So let's talk about a concept in NMR that is very hand wavy and very much depends on us looking at electrons as having a north pole and south pole, even though we know this is not right. And this is the concept of J coupling. So you have your chemical shift, and this is what's associated with the electron density around the particular atom you're looking at. So let's say we were to look at the 1H NMR of the hydrogens in this particular fragment. And for right now, we're just gonna leave this as an unknown R group hanging off its carbon. So you would have the chemical shift you expect for both of them. So let's say for whatever reason the blue hydrogen sit here and your black hydrogen sit here. What you would expect off the bat is just to have one peak for each and their relative areas would be two and three because we have twice as many protons. We have two protons here and three here. But what really happens is we get splitting. So if we were to look at this peak here, what we end up getting is something that looks like this, these hydrogens would look like this. Now, the center of these peaks would be around the expected chemical shift for the particular hydrogen atoms, but why do we get this splitting? And this is what the idea of J-coupling is. So J-coupling is an effect where nearby hydrogen atoms affect other hydrogen atoms. In fact, any spins we're looking at, if they're close enough to each other, we'll see an interaction. Now, typically this has to be within three atoms. So if you look at this hydrogen, this hydrogen will couple these hydrogens because they're one, two, three atoms away. But let's say this R group here was an O, this was a carbon, we had a hydrogen and a hydrogen here. These would not J-couple to these hydrogens because there's too many atoms, one, two, three, four atoms away. So how do we explain J-coupling? Well, the way we look at it, again, just take my word for it, this is how we explain it. If we were to look at this blue hydrogen, in principle, it's aligned with a atom. It's aligned with a magnetic field. Now, how about these three hydrogen atoms? Well, there's three. There's actually multiple ways they could align. We could have all three. Sorry, switch back to black. All three of these black hydrogens, all aligned with a magnetic field. In this case these would actually be working with each other and so it would decrease the chemical shift because they're all pointing the one way but there's only one way to get those geometries another option is to have two pointing up and one pointing down and we've got three different ways we could draw that particular arrangement now you may sit back and say well why would they be pointing down that would be against the magnetic field just take my word for it this is how we explain it so in this case, we have three different ways to arrange this. Now, this is not nearly as stable as this conformation, so that's why we see it slightly shifted, more deshielded. How about one pointing up and two pointing down? Well, there's actually, again, three ways we can draw this. Two pointing down, one pointing up gives us that peak. And we can have the conformation where all three point down. So we have one, three, three, and one combinations, and that's what we see with this. Okay, one, three, three, one areas. So these two peaks, there's only one, one way to get them with the three combinations. So it's one third the height of these three combinations because these three, there's three times as many. How about these three hydrogens? Well, with those three hydrogens, if they're pointing in line with the magnetic field, we can have one confirmation where both of these are pointing up, in this case, it'll be the most shielded. Two combinations where one is pointing up and one is pointing down, that peak, and one combination where these are both pointing down. And so there's your one, two, one ratios. So if we just have these two connected with these two, we can predict the splitting pairs. And so your splitting pairs here are gonna be, if you see three atoms, your nearest neighbor, this would be a quartet. So the splitting pattern is always the number of nearby atoms plus one for that particular neighboring atom. We'll talk about, we're gonna switch this R group to something a bit more complicated in just a minute. So we would say this is a quartet. These three C2, so that makes this a triplet. So your quartet and your triplet. How does this get more complicated? Let's say we have another carbon atom so we have, in this case, propane. Well, these three will split these two, and these three will also split these two. So we'll go back to our old drawing.
not only do we have that effect going on over here, we also have it going here. So what we get here is a quartet of quartets. Each of these four peaks would be split into a miniature quartet. So a quartet of quartets would tell us that these two see three on this side and three on this side. If this, for whatever reason, looked like this, there were no there was no hydrogen here. We'd have a triplet split into we'd have a quartet split into a triplet, or a triplet split into a quartet. It'll have the same effect. The thing is that we'll get splitting patterns don't look, look like simple triplets or quartets. So how do we predict this and how do we interpret this? Well, we're going to use a Punnett square, or not a Punnett square, we're going to use uh, Pascal's triangle. So Pascal's triangle is taken by adding a 1 to each side and then looking at the sum between the two abs. So this would be 3 and 3. This would be 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. Now, if we don't have any neighboring protons, we would get a single peak. So we see this for isolated carbon. So if you had something, I don't know, I can't think of an example off the top of my head, we would have our single peak. If we have one neighboring hydrogen, so in this case, something that looked like this, these three would be split into a doublet. If we have two neighboring hydrogens, we would get our triplet three neighboring hydrogens, we get our quartet. Now, this is only looking at the next atom. Let's say we had, we're gonna focus on these hydrogens, we had another carbon with other hydrogens on it. We would superimpose these. So if we had one hydrogen here, we'd have a quartet split into a doublet. If we had additional hydrogen, we'd have a quartet, quartet split into a triplet, and so forth. The thing is, J coupling is going to complicate our patterns, and basically, it's going to tell us how many neighboring hydrogen atoms there are on the on the atoms that are connected to the carbon that we're next to. Now, does J coupling happen for atoms other than hydrogen? I keep talking about hydrogen. It does happen, and it can happen with carbon. But typically, carbon when we're looking at carbon thirteen and MR, carbon thirteen isotopes are so rare that they're not likely to find each other. They're not likely to be close enough to have that type of coupling. So typically we only focus on J coupling with hydrogen because we're just looking at hydrogen atoms and those make up a lot of atoms inside an um, alkane or alkyne or any type of hydrocarbon. So this is the rundown on how to do J coupling, where it comes from, and what you expect to see in terms of the patterns.